everyone, Pastor Emily here for our first Paint and Hymns. So today's hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful. And the painting that we will be making is this one here. It's a beautiful flower with a cute little ladybug on it. Um, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. So today I will be um, instructing us through this painting. And here are some of the things that you are going to need. The first thing you will need is either a newspaper, a trash bag, or an old towel to put on the surface where you will be putting your canvas or piece of paper so that we don't mess up any of our furniture. The next thing that you will need is either a canvas or a piece of paper. Either one is okay. And then you will need some paints. They can be watercolors or I keep acrylics in my house whatever you have, um, but make sure that you have something to paint with. And then you will need some paper towels. This is for us to put our brushes on in between things. And you will need four brushes. Um, you need two large ones like this and two smaller ones like this. And the reason we need four is because of the rate we will be painting at, um, but each of them you'll see here are really similar in size. So get four paint brushes and then a cup or an empty jar of some sort to wash our brushes. I highly recommend putting a drop or two of dish soap at the bottom of your cup. It should help the brushes clean a little bit quicker, especially if you've got acrylic paint. And then I use a plate. Um, this is a plastic one. And I wrap it in Reynolds wrap because I put the paint on top of the Reynolds wrap and when I'm done, I scrunch it up and put it in the garbage. So that is all that you will need today. Um, here's an optional thing for you. I highly recommend listening to music as we go through this. Keep the volume of your device up high enough that you can hear my voice as it is right now, but play some music, make it fun. Also, normally at these things, people BYOB. Today, I am drinking a Coke Zero, and it's very good, keeps me going. If you would like to drink wine or beer or a glass of milk, whatever, just keep yourself hydrated. And this whole process should take us about 45 minutes. So get your stuff ready, press pause on this video, and then we will get started with step number one. I will see you all in just a minute. Bye. All right, everyone. So we will start with our big brush. And you see we have a blob of yellow and a blob of orange. You don't need a whole lot of paint. Remember, we're gonna be covering these areas here very, very lightly. And we will start with just some yellow so just dab you don't want to get the whole brush in the paint but really just the the tip of the brush and we're going to do a wide sweeping back and forth motion with our brush all we want to do here is cover the canvas okay so go on ahead and do that So as you get around to the bottom here, we want to leave this part blank. We don't need to use all of our yellow paint. So uh, about right to where my fingers are, that's where you'll wanna leave your canvas white. Um, you don't need to make a perfect shape, just kind of leave a blank area there so we don't waste the paint. All right, once you feel like you have covered most of the canvas, you will want to make sure that you are also getting the edges. 
So you'll wanna pick this completely up and turn it and paint along the edge of your canvas. When you hang this up, it will look much better um, having the edges colored in. It, you won't see the brush strokes, the side of the brush strokes. You can leave the bottom blank so that you have some room to set your canvas down like I have here and balance it, but we'll get to it later. We'll do that part last. And we'll get the other side in just a moment. So at this point, your canvas should look about like this, um, yellow from top to bottom. And if it doesn't look quite like this, if you've got some messy stuff going on, the way to correct that is to take your brush, dip it in the yellow paint, and make one stroke left to right. You do not want any strokes that conflict with your left to right if you want this sort of an artisan look. So at this point, um, we are going to add some orange. So you're gonna use your same big brush, and you're gonna take a dab of the orange, and you're gonna mix it into your yellow. We're gonna make a nice light orange. See, I've got kind of a creamsicle look going on. You don't really need more than that. And then dab your brush off because we're gonna do some really, really light strokes. So I'll bring this down so you can see it. So we will just kind of lightly brush back and forth, and we'll blend this in a moment. Don't worry about it right now. We're just kind of dabbing some of that creamsicle in here to make it look like a really soft background. So um, artists do this differently. I am not a professional. I take a clean brush, and this is how I blend these in. I just go over it because the yellow paint is still wet, this is how I'm going to blend in. And I'll show you in a moment how to make it look even softer. All right, with that new brush, Take a dab of the yellow that is left on here without any orange and just very lightly brush it over the orange that you have here. And you see it's already beginning to soften some of these areas. You can add as much or as little orange as you would like into this. I really like warm tones, especially um, when it comes to nature. So I like having a little bit more orange. Okay, at this point, I feel pretty good about my background. So we're gonna take our brushes and put them in our soapy water 
just swish them around a little bit. Um, and then we will immediately take these out and use our, get it out, our paper towel and just dab those off. So we'll dry those and we'll go to our next step. So I hope everybody's feeling like so far so good. Um, so at this time, we're going to let our background dry and then we will go on to the next step and I will see you guys in 10 minutes. So at this point, please press pause on your video. Welcome back after your 10 minute break to let this dry. Um, it might not be completely, totally dry, but um, for the most part, it won't smudge if we begin to paint over it. So you will need for this step, this brush here. So um, one that's smaller, we just finished using this one. Um, we let this one dry as well in our 10 minutes, as well as this larger brush. So we're going down to this smaller one and this is what your paint selection should look like. So um, we still have our orange from earlier. We put white here in the middle just a tiny bit of black, and then you'll want a royal blue and a royal purple. Um, my paints are metallic paints. Um, if yours are matte, that is totally cool, but just make sure that it looks something like this. The first color that we are going to use is black. So again, just dipping the tip of your paintbrush, and then take a look at where we are here and we're going to start about three-fourths of the way up over here and we're going to go up and bring it to a point and then meet that point and come down so it should look something like that now we want to strengthen that you can see mine's a little bit grainy there so we'll go back in and it's okay if it's not completely even on the left side of, see how it's kind of messy on this side? Don't worry about anything inside of the shape we made. Just worry that the line is clean on the outside. Then you'll want to shade slightly on the inside. So see, I'm just doing a little bit, um, but again, you wanna make sure that these are clean and not grainy. So um, I'm using canvas. If you're using paper, this will be a little bit easier for you. But those of you that are using canvas or maybe you have a slab of wood, whatever you've got, just make sure that um, we are getting in to those spaces and getting a firm black line. One way to do that is by stroking your brush back and forth to get into those crevices. So this is your first one here. Now we're going to add another one. We're thinking, now you can do this. This is gonna make it easier for me, I know that. I'm gonna make the center of my flower here. So draw that if that helps you. That gives me some reference. Then we can bring that petal down. I'm going to stop my line right here so that the next petal can sort of ob obscure it a little bit. And this is one of those folksy pieces, so if your line isn't perfect, that's okay. It's still going to look awesome. Now, remembering earlier we did 
our sides and we only painted two of them. We painted the top and we painted one side. If you've already painted this side and your petal is going off the edge, you can continue it. See there. And there we go. So that is my petal coming off of the edge there. And we'll set that back down and we will do our last petal. Before we continue, take your brush and swirl it in that soapy water and then dab it onto your paper towel and set that one to let it dry. At this point, we will grab our second to largest brush. It should be dry. Go on ahead and feel it. If it's not completely dry, dab it off a little bit more before we begin. The next color that we will want to use, um, I'm making my flower a bluish purple. If you would like to follow along with me, that might help. If you are a more experienced painter, you can choose whatever color that you would like for your flower. But I'm going to do a blue. So I'm going to dab my brush here. Again, we just want the tip. You never ever want to go back further than the middle of your brush um, because the paint cakes up in here and when it dries your brush is permanently stiff and, and we don't want to ruin our brushes. So that's why we do that. Okay, so take your um, color that you have chosen and we are going to go along these black lines and do this to start. So just kind of dab it here so we're not going outside of those lines and then I'll show you what to do with your stroke. Okay, so once you have a petal that looks like this, you will want to correct the strokes that we just made by dragging your brush upward over them. So we wanna go from the base here up to the top of the petal. And it's okay if yours looks like mine, um, it should. The reason why we brought the brush in is see how nice and clean that black line looks now. Um, I don't have steady hands. And so I take these additional little steps to help me get those straight lines when I might not be able to drag the brush in a straight line itself. So down here at the base, we want to, again, dragging the brush in that upward direction, we want to do just like this and then we will leave our petals like this. So um, take a moment, crank up that music and paint each of those petals just like this one. At this point, this is what your painting should look like. Um, we don't need to dip this in our water. We're actually gonna keep it just like it is because the next step that we have is to take the blue that we have, scoop it up in your brush, and drag some white over and mix those into a nice light, kind of a baby blue. Once you have a mixture that you like, make your brush look like this. And we're going to just trace along the petals that we have made. It should be all of them. And see what I'm doing here? I'm just very basically coming alongside what we have.
This should be a very easy step because it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just sort of meeting with the blue. Once you have something that looks kind of like this, take your brush and blend the two together. Keeping in mind that all the strokes should be going up through the petal. Now, if your paint is like mine and you painted really thinly, um, some of it might be dry. I will show you how to work with that in a moment. Okay, so a lot of mine kind of came on dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my paints here and I'm gonna take my dark blue and my light blue, mix them up and come in here and go over some of those dry spots with this darker mixture. we are going to move into our next color for these petals. So my color is purple. I'm gonna use the same brush because this is a darker color and we are um, within the blue, so there's no need to change brushes. And we're just gonna get the center here and see how I'm making sort of a point down here that is what you are also going to want to do. And again, keeping the strokes only in two directions. So if your petals look like mine, there's a little bit of sharpness around these purple edges. Take very little purple on the edge of your brush here and kind of stroke along where you've been to gauge how much paint you have on your brush. And just put a light coating that kind of edges into that blue. And I'm even gonna extend mine to some random strokes that come outside here, just to get that blended feel. And then I'm gonna come back down here and make these just a little bit darker here at the base. Again, just kind of giving it some random little, like we're, like we're drawing grass. It needs a little bit more attention on this petal. At this point, your flower should look something like this. Now we're going to take our purple and we're gonna scoop a little bit of that white and mix it on the edge of our purple here so that we can make a nice violet. I love this color. This is my favorite color. All right. Wipe your brush a little, just to make sure that it's coming off as you like. And take that violet, and I want you to put that down here at the base with the purple that you've already done. And run it up again through, especially this blue area. The violet will help out just a little bit. These colors kind of remind me of some of Monet's work. His water lilies especially, I think he used a lot of these tones. No, I'm not comparing my handiwork to his handiwork. <laughs> but the colors are just so, so gorgeous together. Okay. 
All right, we are going to let these petals sit just a little bit. Once you feel like you have blended fairly well, um, we will, oops, I got some white in there. I'll cover that back up with purple. Um, we will let this sit. And the next thing that we're going to look at as this part dries is the center of our flower. So take this dirty brush and rinse it off in there in your soapy water and make sure you give it a good spin inside there. And see mine is a lot of that paint has come off and we're gonna dab that onto our paper towel and let it sit. I had to let the dog out, um, hence the break in the video. So um, here we are. This is what we have so far. We're now going to focus on this area right in here. So if you need to, begin by touching up this line. Um, I did touch up mine just here a little bit before restarting the video. Touch that up, make sure it's firm and black. And then you are going to need to grab a red color and a little bit more yellow. So grab both of those and put a tiny dot of each onto your plate. And then you're going to grab your brush that looks like this. So we're gonna take these two colors, gonna mix them up. You see I have a lot more red in here than I do yellow. That's exactly what we want. I'm taking a little bit of our old orange color, mixing that in. The goal is to get sort of a lighter red in here. And then we're gonna throw in a little bit more orange. And then we're gonna take just a touch of our black and mix that in as well. There we go, we're looking good. So what we're ending up with here is kind of a lightish brown, kind of a red. So you should have a color that looks about like mine. I'm gonna bring it in closer. All right, so we're gonna take that and we are going to dab it around the edges here. So again, with that same technique that we used with our petals, to get that nice even black in there. Go on ahead and make this kind of thick. Now the great thing about this part is we don't need those long strokes like we did with the petals. We're just gonna do short little blunt strokes. We want it to look a little bit rough. So as we're painting, I just wanna ask, um, if you haven't already, uh, there's some really cute pictures floating around the internet of bumblebees who fall asleep in flowers. And um, if you look on Google and you type in bee bums, that's B-E-E-B-U-M-S. Um, you'll get all these pictures of little bees' butts hanging out of flowers. And it is just about the cutest thing that I have ever seen. And it makes me super happy. Um, so after we finish this, if you haven't seen those, you should totally check those out. So here we've made some nice little just short strokes. And now we're going to take our same brush and we're going to take our orange and we're gonna overlap it with this dark color. So we're not mixing on our plate, we're mixing right here on our canvas. you can mix it all the way up here. See these short strokes that I'm making, they're really giving it just a little bit of texture. All right, as we continue, you wanna get brighter and brighter with your orange.
kind of finishing up with your main orange here. And then as we get closer to the corner, we're actually going to mix our orange with some white to get a brighter orange. Here I'm just dabbing it in, getting some of that rougher texture. Okay. So mix some of your orange with some white, get some of that creamsicle color going again like we had earlier. And you can use the same brush. So again, we're flowing all of these colors into each other. And then you're gonna bring that down here. See, we've got a softer orange. For some reason it's reminding me of Mexican food. There we go. And as you're going along, I wanna bring that orange down to the edge. Um, we have completely finished this side here. We're not gonna really do anything with that right now. So if you would like to bring your orange all the way down um, on the bottom edge of your canvas, go on ahead. Um, we're not gonna really move the canvas a whole lot. So it's safe to do this. Okay. I'm also gonna get over here. So that is the center of your flower. That part should be finished. You're gonna take your brush, put it in your soapy water, spin it around, check on it, make sure that you got most all that paint off. And this one's gonna take some wiping. We did some heavy work there. So wipe that off onto your paper towel and set that to dry. The next brush that you will need we're gonna go back to this other smaller brush that we had before. And here on your paint, um, you should have some white. Just very, very lightly dab your brush in that. So we're gonna return to our petals right now. And we're gonna come down here at the base and we're just going to very lightly send some white streaks up into our petal. And also up here at the tips of your petal, you're also going to bring the white and flow it down from there. <laughs> you can probably here, Bandit dreaming. <laughs> he's, he's in the room with us. So we've come to sort of the end of what we're gonna do with our petals. Um, if you have some sharper white spots, kind of like I do, just take your brush and just sort of blend like we did before, make them a little bit softer. Now we're going to take our white and we're just gonna get the very edges, again, of our brush. Dab it off a little bit before you use it. It should look something like this. And we're just going to very, very lightly come along 
the edge of our red here, put a little bit of white just dabbed in there against that black line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, we're also gonna do just, again, little bits of white just like that along the inside of our flower. Just sort of randomly. What this does is it adds to the texture that you've already painted on here. And there we go. Okay, so our flower, um, for the most part, is done. If you would like to add a little bit more white for definition's sake, that is up to you. I'm just adding it to the base of some of these black lines here. All right, so that is the end of our flower. So take that little bit, little bitty brush and rinse it off. Um, I'm doing this over my canvas. I don't recommend that, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, so at this point, your other brush that you used for the orange, it should be fairly dry. If you go like this on your hand, um, not much should really come off of it. So you're going to take your red and you're gonna put it on your plate because the next part is our happy little ladybug. So here, see, I just have a tiny little dab of red and we're going to dab our paint. Get it just like that. All we're doing right now is outlining this ladybug. So I'm gonna put my ladybug right here. You can put your ladybug wherever you would like. But for this, and this part that I'm resting my hand on is dry, so that's okay. I'm just going to ever so lightly make a line. And because my hands tremble, I dotted it out first and then brought my brush along that line. And then I'm going to make the dome shape of my ladybug. and just very lightly color that ladybug in. We will do more with this in just a moment. Now, once you've made a shape that looks like that, um, you need to decide which way your ladybug is going to face. Mine is going to be looking that way. Yours can look either way. Take that same brush and I almost washed it off, woo! All right. Take that same brush and if you have enough black on your plate, that's great. I do not, so I'm gonna get some more. And you, you don't need a whole lot for this because these are very thin, thin coats that we're doing. So you're using that same little, little tiny brush and go on ahead and outline what you have done Once you have outlined your ladybug, we're going to add a little ladybug face, which is just gonna be a circle. And then little tiny ladybug legs. After you've done that, continue with your black and we're gonna make little tiny antennas. Okay, now at this point, wipe off your brush. Don't put it in the water, just wipe it off. And we're gonna go back to our red and fill in 
this part here. Make it nice and strong and vibrant. It's hard to believe that the ladybug is a beetle. It's so pretty and so cute. Okay, so once you have colored in your ladybug, I think you all know what comes next. We're going to put spots on our ladybug. Um, I recommend keeping it simple. I am going to do three spots on mine. So I'm gonna start back here and make like a half circle here. There's one spot. two spots and get some more black and color that in and I will have my third spot. We are not done yet. We got another step. Okay, once you have your ladybug like this, wash off that brush and you can set it aside to dry. We are done with that brush. You're gonna bring back your other little brush. Should be ready to go, nothing should be coming off. And you're gonna grab just a little dab of white on the tip of it and dab it a little on your plate, just like I am there. This is for control, really. <laughs> and we need to decide where the sun is. Um, because I have my petal this way and the white on that petal is up here and we've got white up here. I'm gonna make the sun coming from this direction. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of white on the head here. I need a little bit more. And on the antennas. And then on the back. And it shouldn't be too strong. We're just kind of getting the shininess of the bugs back there. So um, it's very subtle. If you wanted to skip that step, you could. Um, but this is what it looks like. And now, our painting is pretty much done. What I would do at this point is let this dry and then come back and you will want to finish this part here. Just grab your blue and we'll want to wait for this part to dry here and we can finish up this part here. This part, I would just fill it in, the rest of it with yellow. Um, just make it simple. And then of course, we've already done our top and our side. Um, so we just really have this bottom part and this side part here. Um, and this is your painting. If you wanted to, um, you could brighten up this piece here. If, if you don't like how dark it is, um, I'm going to leave mine just like it is because I really like the contrast here. Um, but this is our painting. God made all things bright and beautiful. Um, that is the hymn that I think of when I see things like this. If you are extra artsy and you happen to have a Sharpie paint pen um, in black or in white or whatever color, if you really like your handwriting, I don't like mine, but if you like yours, you can write in here all things bright and beautiful or all creatures great and small, whatever you would like in this empty space here or throughout the petals. It's, it's really um, completely up to you. This is your piece. <laughs> um, but the hymn that I would like to pair with this is All Things Bright and Beautiful. So congratulations, you are officially all artists. And to any artists out there who are actually artists, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> I hope you had fun with this piece. Thank you.
Thank you to all of you who made this with me today. Congratulations, you're done! So, here's what I want from you. If you can take a picture of yourself with your painting or just your painting, if that's what you want, please drop it in the comments for me. I would absolutely love to see your work and know that you did this along with me. Also, if you enjoyed this, can you please let me know um, and let me know if this was a great activity for you and how often you would like to do it if this is something that you liked. Um, we have lots more in store for painting and hymns and we are going to finish today by singing our hymn with our painting. So if you would join me for all things bright and beautiful. Are you ready? Here we go. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, God made their glowing colors, God made their tiny wings. All right, everybody, you did really well. Congratulations, give yourselves a pat on the back and thank you for joining me for this today. I will see you all next time. Bye.